and welcome to Gray County Life. My name is JC Coots. I'm Sarah Carmichael. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you've been keeping busy as we are getting now into fall officially. They had the fall equinox recently <laughs> and we changed the season and it's looking very fall like if you've driven around at all. The leaves are changing. The air is crisper. Nighttime is quite a bit cooler and I got to say I'm loving it. <laughs> is, is there a place in this area and I know, know that you grew up here. Is there a place where you have to go see the fall colors because it's the most breathtaking view in the region. Is there one particular place or is it kind of just everywhere? Honestly, everywhere. I love driving around the country roads and seeing all the different colors. I mean, obviously Inglis Falls is a really good spot to go to during this, well, any time, but especially right now, even just the drive to Inglis Falls is beautiful. Skinner's Bluff is another one. Uh, I like to, you know, go to areas of the Bruce Trail and kind of walk about that way, but it really is I, I do I like to drive around like the Irish block area as well uh, there's uh, some area some spots there where you can go for a walk and and enjoy the fall colors so yeah and even I've noticed uh, some of the different coffee shops have their like fall like flavors <laughs> like the European bakery has a cinnamon bun latte on ah. their menu right now to go along with the pumpkin spice everything's got the pumpkin spice but uh, I noticed that recently they're doing a cinnamon bun latte. So I, I'm glad that they're at least changing it up a little bit because it seems like it's pumpkin spice everything to the point where even craft dinners like let's have pumpkin spice KD and people I are know. just like you know I think we've gone too far I at think, this point. I think that's enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't usually partake in the pumpkin spice myself but I, I, I do love the colors and uh, both you and I we, we've lived in different parts of Canada where they don't have the fall colors yeah. and so we get to this time of year and we're out how come the leaves aren't changing? What's what's wrong here? Why is it all pine trees? Well, even I realized it took me like a year living out west. I lived in northern British Columbia, but it took me a solid year living out there before I realized there wasn't raccoons or skunks there. It's too cold. <laughs> it was the same for me. <laughs> yeah, it's too cold. They can't survive there, so they don't live there. But it was just really funny that, you know, I'd actually came home for a visit and I saw a raccoon or a skunk or something when I was here visiting Owen Sound with my family. And I, it just sort of dawned on me that like I haven't seen a skunk or a raccoon anywhere in the last year. And it, I started talking about it. And then when I got back to where I lived, I was talking with people there. And they're like, yeah, it's too cold here. They don't survive. They can't live here. <laughs> and I was just like, what? Where, where do I live? Like, it's pretty wild. Well, the good news is you get to put your garbage out early if you live in those places. Yes. Except for the bears. That's a... Uh that's a different one. There's a whole different danger there. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, of course, there's just like generally freezing because it's like minus 40 with the wind chill in mid January. Mm -hmm. But uh, but you learn to adapt. You just sure like, do. Just like anywhere. But uh, yeah, of course, with the, the fall coming in, that means that the Owen Sound Attack have officially started their season. Uh, they did have their home opener this past weekend and they are going to be back on the ice uh, this Saturday, actually playing the Erie Otters. Uh, something to take note of is the earlier game time. Mm -hmm. Previously, those Saturday night games would start at 7.30. They now start at 7 o'clock. So it's just something to kind of remember as you're uh, buying those tickets and getting ready to head to the Bayshore. It's going to be a really exciting season, I think. Uh, we're, well, I can just say on behalf of the broadcast team with Mark McKelvey and Adrian Musso that we're all happy to be back and uh, covering the games again. I know you're happy to be back in the arenas again, yes. running the contests and everything. So make sure you watch for Sarah. If you go to games this season, she might have a prize for you. I might be out in the crowd throwing ice cream at you. That's <laughs> pretty much my, my favorite giveaway. But it's been a really fun time to be part of the Attack family the last few years. And we have to say congratulations to Colby Barlow. Mm -hmm. signing on with the Jets. What That's an right. incredible opportunity for such a gifted player. There's a lot of people that might be worried that you might not see him back this year, but uh, by all indications, uh, it sounds like he's going to be back with the attack this season. Mm -hmm. It might be his last, though, from what some of the experts are saying. So if you're a big Colby fan, this might be your last chance to see him play for the attack. Might be your last chance to, to get his jersey. I was about to say I would definitely check with the uh, with the shop there at the Bayshore to get a Barlow jersey because I have a feeling those are going to be sold out first. Uh, speaking of jerseys, I don't know if you keep up with the uh, Taylor Swift news, <laughs> but she was recently spotted at a Kansas City Chiefs game up in a luxury suite 
buddy buddy with Travis Kelsey's mom, Donna, because there has been rumor that they've been dating Travis and Taylor, and they were seen leaving the stadium together after the game, and then they went to a restaurant, and get this, they wanted to go to a restaurant, but they wanted privacy. So before they got to the restaurant, they called ahead and basically said, we want to come eat at your restaurant, but we don't want anybody around. So if everyone in the restaurant will leave right now, we will pay their tabs. So like Taylor Swift did this. Like she literally paid for everybody who was in the restaurant at that moment. <laughs> she paid for everyone's meals <laughs> just so they would leave. I would, I'd leave, I'd be like, cool, can I get 14 steaks to go, yep, like absolutely. as well? May I get 18 <laughs> creme brulees wrapped up? If, it's, if T Swift is fun yeah. the bill, uh -huh. I'm getting out of here. But since Taylor and Travis have been linked, mm -hmm. the sale of Travis Kelsey jerseys has gone up 400%. I was waiting for that <laughs> stat to come out because I had a feeling there was gonna be a lot of Taylor Swift fans who bought their first NFL jerseys on Sunday, and sure enough. 100%, yeah. yeah. The, all those jerseys did not go to football fans. They went to Taylor Swift fans, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should say before we, we get into the show today, one thing that I did this uh, this past weekend that was very exciting, uh, Mary Jane Murray, of course, who uh, used to host this show mm -hmm. uh, before we came on board, uh, she is working on a new project with Rogers TV that you're going to see starting in the new year, and this project is going to focus on local storytellers. And I was asked to come and be a storyteller, which was a little nerve-wracking to try to fill a seven-minute story without notes. You, you have to do this on stage in front of, a, of an audience. But if you are someone that feels like you're a storyteller, I know that Mary Jane is looking for some more storytellers. So please reach out to uh, Rogers TV Gray County. Uh, Mark Perry is our producer here. Uh, let him know if you are a storyteller that has a story to share, maybe a story about a journey or a story about a big mistake. Uh, Mary Jane would like to have you for that new program in the new year. I don't want to say anything else, though, because uh, I don't want to give it away. I'm trying to think of a story. Maybe that time I got lost at Disneyland. That's a good one. I was like 12. I do, I do enjoy that story, actually. <laughs> if you could stretch it out over seven minutes without notes, <laughs> maybe. we would love to, to hear it. Oh, maybe. <laughs> uh, on the show today, we are going to be welcoming Marcia Cunningham from the Roxy Theater, as well as Peter Reed from Crime Stoppers, and Renee from the Owen Sound Animal Shelter will be joining us. So please stay tuned. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. And welcome back to Gray County Life. We are joined now by our next guest. She is the executive director of the Roxy Theater here in Owen Sound, Marcia Cunningham. Hello, Marcia. How are Hi. you today? Great. How are you guys doing? Very good. Thanks for coming in to talk about what's going to be a really busy October mm -hmm. for the Roxy Theater. There's a lot going on. You guys don't have many days where 
where I, I think they're called dark days in the dark theater days. world. That's yes. Right. Yeah. yeah, there are not many dark days no. at all. No. We're very lucky. Lots mm -hmm. of people want to come and perform at the Roxy. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be busy. Really, it's going to be busy from now until the end of June, I think. But anyway, it's we'll a focus good problem on to have, you know, yeah. <laughs> especially after so many years of, of not having anything going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's been a real, real, uh, really nice. And we've seen with the, the community as well is just really excited to be back at the theater, whether mm -hmm. it's for Owen Sound Little Theater Productions, for the Roxy Present series, for the rentals that different promoters are bringing in for our youth program. And also last year, we started an Adults with Disabilities program and the show at the end of the season for that was really well received so we're very fortunate that uh, people are happy to be back so that's great let's start uh, with some shows that are happening uh, as early as the end of this week so yes. there's going to be shows on friday and saturday at the roxy let's yeah. start with the friday night show what, sure what's okay, going well, on friday? i'm first going to give you guys props so okay. I've props. you know how we like props yes at the absolutely so this we is do. our brochure okay and you can pick this brochure up at the theater or other places throughout the community um, and so this brochure basically summarizes everything we've got going at the theater basically between now and the end of June. Mm -hmm. That said, always check the website because sometimes things get added after print. Um, but in terms of what we've got coming up immediately, um, on October 7th, we have Early Morning Rain, which is The Legend of Gordon Lightfoot. That's part of our Roxy Presents series, and mm -hmm. Lisa Way and the Wayward Wind Band are bringing that. Yeah, that actually sold out when they did it in Collingwood. Eight nights, Not too I think. long ago, yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So we've got one night, mm -hmm. and I hope it sells out here as well, because yeah. I think Owen Sounders will really love that show. Mm -hmm. And um, especially with the passing of Gordon Lightfoot as well, I think it, a lot of people are feeling nostalgic about his music and the contribution that he made to the Canadian musical landscape. So, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and then the October 13th and 14th, um, do you guys know Angola Murdoch? She grew up here in Owen Sound, um, Bill Murdoch's daughter? Yes, yeah. Murdoch, I actually yes. Went, I went to high school with her. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, so you know um, that she has been doing um, like circus arts and aerial the arts. Cirque du things yes. and all the amazing different tricks and things, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, and For so sure. she's really, really inspiring. And this show that she's bringing October 13th and 14th is actually her personal journey because oh. she was diagnosed with scoliosis. Mm -hmm. And so as an aerial artist whose career and uh, passion involved, I'm imagining bending one's spine, yeah. um, getting a 10 inch metal rod really changed things for her. And so um, the production that she's created, this twist of fate is a really inspiring journey about um, for her, her process, I guess, of dealing with that and still being able to continue uh, as an aerial artist. Wow. So it's visually very beautiful. Gary Byers, our tech guy, is really excited about the tech. Mm -hmm. I don't know the details, but when he gets excited, <laughs> I get excited. So. Yeah, I don't feel like Gary Byers gets too excited exactly, too often, right? so that says a lot. Exactly. Lots of people watching this know Gary, and they'll be like, yeah, exactly. I got to go He's see usually a pretty, yes. pretty serious yeah, guy. So exactly. That's no, he great. was super excited, so that was great. <laughs> Awesome. And, and then on October 14th, we have the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Mm -hmm. And that's just a ton of fun. Have you guys been to see that like in a theater before? I haven't, but I've heard that people dress up. Yes. And they get like, they yell at the screen yes. during certain uh, points. And yeah. it can be very interactive and very entertaining. Not just like the movie itself, but the actual like, you know, audience participation. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a ton of fun. <laughs> and then the uh, last thing in October through our Roxy Presents series is we have a stand-up comedy showcase with two headliners. We've got Lori Elliott and Arthur Simeon. Um, both of them, if you check them out on YouTube, do you know either of I them? I love Lori Elliott. Oh, so do I. I went to yeah. school with her, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, well, I don't know her personally, okay. but I've watched her, ju her Just for Laughs. Yes segments and different uh, comedy festivals that she's taken part in. I've watched those on like YouTube and mm -hmm. stuff and I love her style of comedy and her just her the way that she she tells her jokes and yeah she's really funny. Really so funny and did you know cool. that last week she put out her first comedy album? I didn't know that. Yeah so check it out as well. I'll okay. send you the link. Yeah. Um, I follow her on Instagram too and she put a, a post about it last week. Yeah. And yeah she's just really really funny mm -hmm. and um, and has done so, uh, she's also on the debaters a lot too. Yep I've seen her there. Yeah and that's always a nice treat like I'll be listening to CBC and oh there she is. It's someone you yeah. know so yeah. that's really nice. Yeah. yeah and Arthur Simeon's also phenomenal. He's okay been on Just for Laughs as well, lots of, you know, lots of credits to his name. Yep. So we're excited to have the two headliners for a really great night of comedy That's in awesome. October. Great. Um, and then when you're in the brochure, if you look to the this page here. Mm -hmm. um, I highlighted some things on mine, but <laughs> that's basically our season at a glance. Oh, and wow. so you can see 
Um, the other things we have, I'm going to jump back a little bit, but October 6th, we have a ZZ Top tribute band called Fandango. Um, and then we've got October 11th, the Ennis Sisters are in concert. They're from the East Coast. Really, really lovely music. Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of wraps up October because then in November, you guys take the stage. That's right, and we've already started actually uh, taking over the stage a little bit. Now, obviously, with all these events, we don't get to rehearse as much as we would, would like to for one flew over the cuckoo's nest on the yeah. big stage. Yeah. So a lot of that's been happening at the Knights of Columbus yes. Center. But we were there last week. Uh, we're going to be there a few more times in the month of October, gearing up for this show, which I'm not a theater veteran. I'm going to say this. This is my second yeah, play you were great ever. Last at year. Its, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I was uh, born yesterday, last April, and uh, also a guest on this show, uh, as funny as it was when, when we were promoting that yeah. show. So it's now come full circle. But just being on the sidelines of rehearsals, I can say this is going to be an amazing show. Yeah. Our cast is phenomenal. Our director, Corey LaPointe, is she's putting us through through the ringer a lot. I'm, I'm going to be honest, yeah. but we love what we're doing, and we love her creative direction. Yeah. And when you see it on stage, it's hard to believe it's it's still less than two months, but yeah. when it's ready to go, it's going to be amazing. Great. That's and so good. Just uh, as everything else is that the Roxy puts on, like the, every production, it seems like it's not professional, no. but it looks like it. Yes. And it's from the people on the stage to the people upstairs turning the lights on, running the soundboard. These are amazing productions that you put on. Yeah, the Owen Sound Little Theatre productions are absolutely fantastic. We actually started uh, last week with the, uh, or two weeks ago, with the one-act plays, and that was a lot of fun as well. Got some new directors and new actors on stage. And then, yeah, this season, we've got the One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which you're in, and then the Ladies Foursome. Uh, check our website for auditions for Ladies Foursome, because those are sort of right, right about now. Mm -hmm. yep. And then Something Rotten as well, and auditions for that. That's a big, big musical, and uh, lots of uh, people are needed for that one as well. And so there's uh, auditions going to be happening for that as well. If people are, are thinking about becoming a member of the Owen Sound Little Theater, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, maybe someone that's going to be a member of the crew someday, or someone that's going to be on stage, or, or maybe just, you know, you just love to support the theater because yeah. it's a great thing to support, especially uh, in our community. How do they go about doing that? That's a great question. So you can come into the box office, you can call the box office, you can go online and buy a membership, um, and that's We'll, then we'll reach out to you, find out what areas of interest you have. A lot of people, when they start out at the theater, will come in as like, and they'll help out with ushering or bartending, something a little bit more social to get to know people. But there are people who jump straight into acting roles or backstage roles, board of directors, you know. So uh, there's a lot of opportunities for involvement at the Roxy Theater, and we couldn't do it without our volunteers. So we encourage people to reach out. And I think you're you're always actively looking for for ushers and for bartenders. I bartenders, especially, especially right now, yeah, definitely. What's the process in becoming a bartender? Mm -hmm. if, if you are interested in volunteering, how does that process? Yeah, so work? same process, and then um, we'd connect you with our front of house coordinator um, and our volunteer coordinator, ensure that you've got your smart serve, and um, get you. And of course, if you need to get your smart serve, we would cover the cost of that, and uh, get you set up and trained, mm -hmm. and off you go. Yeah. Off you go. I know that you just had the, uh, I think the annual general meeting was just uh, just passed yes, for, for the right. uh, Roxy for Little Owns on Little Theatre. Um, anything, any highlights out of the meeting as the executive director? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, we passed a revenue milestone of over a million dollars for the first time, and that was a combination of through operations, through some grants. We've been very fortunate with uh, Ontario Trillium Foundation has supported us. We received funding from um, the federal government through the uh, Canadian Arts Presentation Fund. That's what funds our Roxy Presents series. Uh, some local contributors as well. Uh, the Ava Leffler Foundation supports our youth program. Um, Community Foundation Grey Bruce supports us as well. Kiwanis, Walmart. So we've been very fortunate with support. Um, but our building is old. And so, you know, the revenue will go to, <laughs> will, is needed. So yeah. uh, not, not only to put on the productions that we do and to bring in, you know, to the, bring in the shows that we do and keep the lights on, but then also we're planning some capital enhancements to the building that are much, much needed. So mm -hmm. those yeah. are the, that sort of sums up the, the AGM wow. from my standpoint. Wow. Perfect. Yeah.
Yeah, that's incredible. And yeah, the Roxy is, is a great community hub. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for anybody who has, you know, wanted to get their kids involved. Absolutely. There's some opportunity, I think, with the, with the camps that you Yeah, run. that's right. We run the youth program. And mm -hmm. so there's a page on that in here as well. Mm -hmm. And so our youth program um, has Act 1, Act 2, which are like classes. Right now, Act 1 is full. I think there's still some spaces in Act 2. Okay. Um, we run March break camps, we run summer camps, um, and honestly, Lacey Mooney does such an incredible job. Um, we're also going to be having auditions soon for the youth programs, production of Adam's Family, okay. in, and that'll be in the springtime. Uh, the uh, auditions will take place much sooner than that. And so that's a full-scale production of... Um, of the Adams Family, it's a musical. I think they'll be looking for like 25 or 30 kids. Plus, we like to get kids involved in the backstage elements as well. Yeah. We had this one kid, and I hope he's he's going to be back this year. Like, I'm pretty sure he like ran the lights for most of the show <laughs> last year. Like, it was pretty incredible to see the level of talent. So, yeah, That's awesome. And it's a great experience. I mean, I my siblings were both actually in presentations okay. of the Roxy Theater when they were like. I'm going to say like seven and nine oh, or cool. something like that. I think they were in a production of Oliver okay. many moons ago. Yeah. And they still talk about it. Yeah. And they're both in their 30s now. And they still talk about that experience and how it was fun, you know, going to the rehearsals and mm -hmm. then getting fitted for wardrobe. Mm -hmm. And it's a really neat thing to, for kids at a, a certain age to get involved with. And, you know, and who knows where it can lead, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's not even necessarily just for those who you know, want to pursue acting, it can be really good for building self-confidence and just getting the experience with working in the theater. And, mm -hmm. and as you said, there's so many different areas of the theater that they can get involved with. Mm -hmm. If maybe being front and center isn't for them, they'd prefer to maybe be part of the set design mm -hmm. or helping out with the lighting and, and the, the sound even. Absolutely. And the, the Act 1, Act 2 classes as well, although they work on performance skills, they also work on all of those other elements. And it's also just a really nice safe space for kids. Like, mm -hmm. quite honestly, COVID, you know, is hard for a lot of kids. And so it's really nice for, like, theater creates an environment where kids can kind of try some different stuff on in terms of who they want to be or what they want to project. They can feel more comfortable. They can feel accepted in ways that maybe they don't in other elements of their life. Yeah. And so we really see that from the kids as well, just that it's providing a really safe space for them to kind of take a deep breath and have some fun and be themselves a, a little bit more than maybe they are in other areas. So it's a really great program. Yep. I, I can say it's a great space for adults too that are, totally. are newcomers into, into acting or, or whatever roles they might have because every time I'm with the groups, whether it was with the group that we had last year for Born Yesterday or this group for Cuckoo's Nest, you, you're always among people that are cheering you on every step yes. of the way. And there's nothing, there's no such thing as a bad mistake. It's right. just, even if you make one, especially on the stage, as I learned through the first go, somebody will cover for you. Like, the, <laughs> that is the, the best team that you will ever be a part of. Yeah, everyone wants everyone else to be successful. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really great about an artistic, collaborative environment like the Own Sound Little Theater. Uh, just proving that this, this theater, that this uh, company is for everyone. You guys started the, the Roxy Star Company mm -hmm. last year. Uh, tell us about that. Group. Sure. So again, that was also started with funding from the Ontario Trillium Foundation, as was the expansion to our youth program last year. Um, and so that is a program that is for adults with disabilities or complex needs. Um, and it was a series of classes. Actually, we're starting up some workshops right now as well for um, just sort of one-offs as well for, for people who are interested. Um, but it was a series of classes, and then at the end, they put on a talent show. And it was done in con with, with the support of, the, of community living as well. And um, it, was, it was like the last thing we did before we kind of broke for summer camps. It was the most positive, like love-filled event. The audience was just so amazing because there was lots of friends and people who maybe are in programs with the people who are on stage. So the audience was a little bit unpredictable <laughs> and like a lot of fun stuff happened even just in the audience. But the people on stage were like, I, I had tissue, I had tears in my eyes, like you're laughing and like, it was just so great to see um, them putting on this amazing show for their friends and family. and. Um, I think a lot of people felt like they really grew through it, both the volunteers who were helping, but then also the participants on stage. And there was certainly a lot of demand. So the program is back, and we've expanded a little bit with those, pro those uh, workshops this year as well. 
Is it uh, too early to inquire about those programs, to sign up for them? Will that be happening at a later date? Um, no, you can check our website. Definitely the workshops are on sale right now, and I think as well the Star Company classes are on sale right now. If they're not, they will be very soon, though. So another thing that to do is to follow us on Facebook. Um, members get sort of all of our correspondence. Uh, members also get um, like a sneak peek or a, uh, like front of the line mm -hmm. purchase opportunities for our shows and so they can kind of get like first dibs on tickets for something that they want um, so becoming a member is a great way to stay right on top of everything but also just by um, following us getting onto our mailing list and uh, you'll you'll we, we do our best to keep everyone in the loop so all right uh, we've got a couple of minutes left, uh, okay. Marcia, and uh, we're going to, because there's so much going on at the Roxy this season, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're going to have you by about once a month, but awesome. is there anything uh, that you know that's coming up this season uh, that people are going to want to get tickets for quickly because you know that it's going to be a sellout or it's going to be so successful that they may miss that opportunity? That's a great point. So, you know, beyond what we have in October and the Roxy Presents series, and I think all of those are, you know, probably going to sell very, very well. Um, coming into December, we've got Slow Can Ramblers, we've got Choir, Choir, Choir. Um, that will sell out, I'm sure. Um, Maggie's Wake, Spirit of the Season. The Mud Men then is in January. Um, also, from a rental standpoint, the Beckets are on our stage for New Year's Eve. That's always mm -hmm. popular. It's, it's a tradition. T totally. It's a tradition. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they do they do a matinee and an evening? They do. Yeah. And Tyler Beckett, he was just, uh, I think I saw him last a couple of weeks ago <laughs> in like the Con Canadian Country on Music stage Awards. stage at the CCMAs. Yeah, <laughs> I know. He's like a financial advisor by yeah. day and then a fiddle superstar performing at the CCMAs by night. Yeah. It's incredible. I actually saw him years ago when I was living in Thunder Bay. Yeah. He was touring with this artist named Dan Davidson. Okay. Okay. And they were on stage in Thunder Bay. And I'm looking and going, I think that's Tyler Beckett. And it was. Yeah. And I had known him for a number of years because I had been in the Georgia Bay Children's Choir. Oh, cool. And we would often do shows with him and his sister, Lindsay. Yes, and Lindsay's amazing. Yeah, yeah. they're both insanely talented. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that will probably be a sellout. It, it usually is a pretty popular show. Yep. Yeah, and then also we've got a bunch of great rental stuff in December as well. We've got uh, Lennon Live show, Men of the Deeps. I think that one sold out. Hmm. Uh, as I mentioned, Slow Can Ramblers. We've got a Kiss Destroyer um, cover. Uh, Barra McNeil's, that just went on sale. Okay. That'll sell out as well. It always does. Yep. Lunch at Allen's, um, uh, Hill and McGraw, a Rock and Roll Christmas, which is a tribute, uh, a, a fundraiser for a, a local animal um, shelter. And then, of course, yeah, the New Year's Eve. Awesome. But yeah, and your show smack dab right in the middle of all that. We've <laughs> got our Roxy Presents October, we've got you in November, and then we've got all that great stuff in December. It That's is going to be a busy time at the Roxy. I'm Marcia Cunningham, Executive Director. Thank you so much for coming in today Thank you. to let us know everything that's happening. Thanks. We'll be back with more about Crime Stoppers and a special event coming up on Great County Life. home. It was a thousand kilometers away. They forced them to go to the Indian restaurant to school. More than 150,000 of us children had to go. They wanted to change us. Our Father in heaven, Our Father in heaven hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Kill the Indian and the child. It's been called cultural genocide. I survived residential school. My brother Johnny did not. Chani Wenjack was one of thousands of children who died due to Canada's residential school system. More than 80,000 survivors and their families still live with its legacy today. Coming up on the next Gray County Life, we'll be chatting with Chef Jason and getting some cooking tips. And also Renee from the Owensound Animal Shelter will join us in studio with an adoptable animal on Gray County Life. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks and it shattered her world. <laughs>
back to Gray County Life. Joining us now in studio from Crime Stoppers Gray Bruce is Peter Reed. Hello, Peter. Hello, nice to be here. Thank you for coming in. We very much appreciate it. Now, Crime Stoppers Gray Bruce has been around for for, for a while now. 36 years. Exactly. <laughs> as long as we've been alive, pretty much, <laughs> give or take, give or take a few years. But uh, give us a little bit of the of the background, like what is Crime Stoppers and uh, sort of what's the, the goal of the organization? Well, Crime Stoppers is, is a registered charity. Um, that, that's a, something that a lot of people don't, don't expect. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to, to fundraise for all our funds. Um, and the easiest way to explain it is Crime Stoppers kind of acts as a filter between the, the police and people. And we involve the media uh, to promote certain crimes that have happened in the community or you know, general awareness. And hopefully people call us and say, uh, hey, we have some information regarding you know, a break and enter or some drug sales or stolen you know, vehicle more, or whatever. Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, we take the information and it's all done confidentially, anonymously, and then it's passed along to the police or whatever authority deals with whichever crime we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and if it results in arrest or recovery of property, uh, then they can earn a reward. Okay. So somebody phones Crime Stoppers, they talk to a volunteer. They're not talking to a uniformed police officer to give their anonymous tip. It's just they'll, a they'll, Yeah, they'll either be talking to our coordinator mm -hmm. um, or Crime Stoppers actually owns its own call center um, located up near Gravenhurst somewhere. Okay. Oh. And, so, and that services all of Canada. So during office hours, you, you'll, you'll catch our coordinator in its office. After hours, it goes to our own call center, so there's no outside agencies involved there and it, it's all confidential. You're, you're not talking to a police officer, you're talking to either our paid employee or our call center. And should people, when they are thinking about calling Crime Stoppers, mm -hmm. should they wait to hear Crime Stoppers saying, if you know about this crime call, or is it just kind of a always be diligent if you see something that's up that maybe you don't want to call the police, but you can call Crime Stoppers and still be anonymous? Is, yeah. Is it for both reasons? Y yes, uh, and sometimes it's people don't want to get directly involved in a situation, mm -hmm. or you know they're not okay. Maybe it's really not that important, but I should probably tell someone. Um, or you know, I want to make a couple hundred bucks, so I'm gonna rat someone out. Right, <laughs> right. We, 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 you know, it's all different reasons, um, and we, we always say too, if you're actually witnessing a crime in progress. Please don't call us. Please call 911. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're more for information after the fact. And it's for any crime, not just the ones we advertise on our Crime of the Week spots. Mm -hmm. um, it, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not just, um, you know, what you'd think of the normal stuff. There's also, you know, uh, animal abuse, um, mm. uh, illicit tobacco sales, or, you know, whatever. It's. You know, we, we cover just about everything, uh, illegal hunting or hunting out of season. Um, okay. You know. And it, there's been a lot of success, too, in this area with, uh, oh, yeah. I know there's been some high profile um, tips that have been um, elicited from the public, and it's actually resulted in, in some pretty big arrests that have happened in this area. Uh, there, there are, and, and we don't, you, 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 you'll actually never hear us taking credit for an arrest <laughs> in, in public. Um, and you know, that makes fundraising a challenge, let me tell you. It would be so great if we could turn around and say, hey, you know that crime? Our tips solve that. Yeah. Or our, our, let me rephrase that. Our tips help the police solve that. Right. Um, but yeah, w we can't do that. But I, I can tell you this year alone, we're so far into the year, we're over 800 tips. Wow. And uh, crimes are getting solved. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Have, have you seen... Um, uh, more of a of a spike in in calls that are coming in, more tips coming in to, to Crime Stoppers this year, or is it kind of just a normal year for for the it, organization? It, it tends to uh, you know vary a little bit up and down year to year. Um, we, we're definitely up a bit this year, and part of that's probably due to some high profile crimes that have happened. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it, it just it, it'll vary. Next year might be down a little bit, but I, I think. The majority of people know what Crime Stoppers is, and you know we, we do get, I'll call them frequent flyers, who, who uh, you know tend to report numerous times a year. We'll say, mm -hmm. and 
we, we, we can't even kind of track that anymore. <laughs> um, and, and that was solely based on our, our coordinator saying, yeah, I recognize the voice from a, you know, a, a previous thing or something. Right. We, we have really no idea who's on the other end of that line. Mm -hmm. um, but now you can also leave tips through our app, the P3 app, which you can download for Apple or Android. Okay. And again, it's all anonymous. Um, you can leave a tip on our website, um, again, all anonymous. And uh, you can still phone right. the, the good old fashioned way. Yeah. So multiple ways to get the text or get the, the message in, the tip yes. in. Not just phoning anymore. There's the web I way, mm -hmm. uh, there's the app way. So if you're like me and you're a millennial and you're a little bit shy and you want to communicate <laughs> that way through an app, that's, that's available to you. The, the, the app is really, like for us, it's great because it gives us the ability to message back Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't like you get a ding on your phone saying, hey, Crime Stopper sent me a message. You have to log back into the, the portal and you have to use the same password you used to initially do the tip right. um, to be able to see that message. So if someone else grabs your phone and just puts in a random password or whatever, they're not going to see anything. Right, so making sure that these are anonymous yes. and they remain anonymous yes. is definitely a high priority. Oh, definitely. That, that's the, the cornerstone of our program. Right, right, absolutely. Now, of course, as you mentioned, you are a registered charity, and so as part of that, to maintain your operations and your continued involvement within the community, you need to fundraise. Constantly. And so, <laughs> constantly. <laughs> and we're fundraising now. Every, yes. every day we're fundraising. Every now, day. Uh, you do have an event coming up uh, at the Legion, a really fun concert. Yeah, it's, uh, we're calling it Rocking for Rewards, okay. and it's, uh, we've got Midlife Crisis playing. They're a well-known band. Yeah, that's I've what that's what them. we were counting on yeah. when we hired them. <laughs> bring your bring your fans with you, will you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's uh, it's twenty five dollars. You can get your tickets online. Um, so if you you go to our Facebook page or you you go to uh, cstip.ca, you'll find a link. And uh, we use a platform called Zephy for our ticket sales and fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, so you can just buy your tickets online through there. Um, assuming we don't sell out, we will have tickets at the door. Um, but we'd really like the advanced sales so we know how many people are coming. <laughs> right, yeah, so we've got the, so it's at the Legion. What time is that starting at? Uh, doors open at 7.30, they take the stage at eight. Okay. And uh, they're doing two sets, so they'll be taking a little break in the middle, but they'll be playing till midnight, basically. So okay. they'll be tired when they leave. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So dancing, I assume the bar will the be bar open. The bar will be open. <laughs> we're we're uh, uh, right now lining up some food for the event, too, so it, it may very likely be pizza or something, but there'll be something there to nosh on. And, right. You know, Perfect. Okay. And all the money goes right back. Actually, on this event, 100% um, of the ticket sales goes back to Crime Stoppers. Wow. Okay. Um, we, we have a sponsor for the, uh, uh, the, the band and the sound, so. Absolutely yeah. everything. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And I understand there's a 50-50 a that's going to be there, which I think is part of the summer 50-50. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a, a, a summer-long 50-50 draw. This is something new for us, and we really had no idea how well it was going to go mm -hmm. because we have limited options for selling these tickets throughout the year. Um, but, but it's doing okay so far. And uh, the draw will be held that night at the dance. Uh, you, again, you can get your tickets through our, our Facebook or uh, website, or if you happen to know someone who's on the board of Crime Stoppers. Um, also, the uh, uh, IDA Pharmacy on the west side of Owen Sound, mm -hmm. um, they have tickets for us there. Yeah, and, and, and uh, I bought. I just bought some recently, actually, yep. for the the fifty fifty. And so, if you if you look on their Facebook page and you look up the poster, yep. there's a little scan yep. with your phone, and it'll take you right to the website. It's a Zephy website as yes. well, and you just buy them right there. And I think I bought. They're they're five dollars. Yeah. And I think I bought two or something like that, and, and it's, uh, I love a good 50-50, so I was like, sign, Who doesn't, right? sign me up, right? <laughs> but, uh, but that's awesome, and I mean, I think when I looked, it was almost a thousand bucks, is that right? Or was it more than that? I, I, I think right now, the, the, the prize is sitting at over a thousand dollars. Oh, it's over a thousand now? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, which is cool. And, you know, we, we had kind of high hopes when we started this, because we said, okay, we're going to do, you know, uh, 3,000 tickets. So mm -hmm. theoretically, the prize could be $7,500 if the tickets start right. moving a little better. You know? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, people have until the 14th to purchase them, and then they'll do the, the draw yeah. the night of the, of the concert, which yeah. is really cool. But you, you can make some room in your bank account for that, right? When you yeah, win? I think so. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm sure just I wanted could, to make sure. I'm sure I could find something to spend <laughs> the extra money yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, 
as you mentioned, you're, you're a charity, so you fundraise all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you've got uh, a Canada Helps uh, website, I believe, where people can make donations we any do. time of the year. We do. You, and uh, again, through uh, the Zephy website, you can also mm -hmm. uh, donate. Um, Canada Helps has been great to us for years. They're a well-known site. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, they do charge us service charges, right? right. Because um, where, where Zephy is a little different, um, they don't charge us any service charge, but they give the person donating the option to donate something towards them to cover their operating costs. Right. Um, so we're, we're giving that one a try right now, seeing how it goes. But definitely, we're still on Canada Helps them. We'll gladly take money there as well. <laughs> would, the, would the best way then for, for people to help, would it be just to, to stop by the office and drop off a cash donation or what's yeah, the best they, way? Yeah, they, they, can, they can call us, email us. Um, uh, generally, we prefer you to call before you drop by the office because... Uh, um, just the nature of the business. Just the nature of the business, yeah. Yeah. right? And yeah. It's uh, kind of nice for, uh, for Drew to have a heads up before someone starts pounding on the door, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's great, and I, I know that there's been money raised as well through like the car shows or the car yeah. tour. Yeah, we, we've, uh, the last couple of years for the Salvo Beach uh, uh, Cruises car night there, That's we've right, sold 50-50 yeah. tickets there and, and done quite well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, since COVID, uh, we started with uh, originally a, a traveling car show. The, the, there wouldn't be a static show, the cars would just follow a route and people could sit out in the front lawn or whatever and watch the cars go by and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, we had little collection buckets at the start of that where the cars would come in and they'd donate for us and that's done quite well and we, we've uh, uh, expanded that since the COVID restrictions are off that at the end of the tour all the cars gather in one place and there's a, a car show. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, we, we had our last one last weekend and it did rather well for us as well. So. Right. So the car shows obviously will, will continue and will continue to be a, a, a big fundraiser for, for Crime Stoppers Grave Roots. We're, we're hoping so. We're hoping we, so. We, have, we, have a, we have a you know a partner in the uh, the, the car clubs that uh, you know help run this for us and, mm -hmm. and they actually do quite a bit of the work and we supply a little labor the day of the event. But um, so as long as they're willing, we're going to keep uh, going along with them. Are there any other uh, events that happen maybe during the course of the year that people should keep on their calendar for? Uh, ways to help support Crime Stoppers? We run a, uh, a golf tournament each year, and we have for, I think, 31 years now, 31 or 32. And uh, it is great. Every year it's a sellout. So if you want to golf in it and you hear about it, that's the time to, to sign up. Get, get your name in because, yeah. you know, if you wait, um, you, you won't get in. <laughs> um, there's awesome prizes. We generally have two or three cars available on the whole of one prizes, um, plus cash. I think it's uh, uh, last year was a thirty thousand dollar hole in one. If you, you got the hole in one, and there was a, a Kia, there was a Cadillac, um, and a, you know, great steak dinner. We have celebrity um, people in there. Pete Mahovlich was our guest this year. Wow. Um, so it, it's uh, it, it's a great day of golf if you're a golfer. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the dinner was excellent, and it raised about $25,000 for us. So. Wow. When, when is this tournament? And our tickets already on sale for next year. They're not on sale yet. They get released in the spring, and it's usually the first Thursday in June. Okay. okay. And uh, about uh, last year, what was the cost per person for the tournament? It was about $200 a golfer. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, as your regular, you got the golf, you got the dinner. Um, silent auctions um, and some decent prizes and mm -hmm. and fun and fun <laughs> lots of fun lots of fun yeah Pete yeah. Mahovlich last year you mentioned is the celebrity have you already started to look at who might be coming next year uh, we haven't heard yet we'll, we'll generally get that information uh, usually in around February or March mm -hmm. and then we'll do a big announcement on it and I, I believe Cubby is available <laughs> from the Go and Send Attack. He's a local celebrity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cubby and could be booked. We, 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 we get locals in there too. And uh, yeah, there All right. Awesome. Now, yeah. if anybody is interested in getting involved with Crime Stoppers, like becoming uh, a, a member, a volunteer, mm -hmm. how would they go about that? You did mention um, before that you're often looking for board members. We are. We, we are definitely looking for board members right now. Um, Generally, in a charity, you'd like to see some turnover of board members because it, it's, it's healthy. It keeps the board fresh. And, right. and, and I've been doing this for eight years now. And I'd really like someone to take over. 
<laughs> Someone take <laughs> take this from me, please. No, it, it's you know it, it's great. I, I really enjoy my time that I have been on the board, but right. I, I do strongly believe that other people fresh need to fresh ideas, yeah, fresh ideas, yeah. fresh perspective, new contacts, mm -hmm. um, because we all milk our own contacts. You know, it, dry. It's, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, and, and it's not a huge commitment, but you have to go into it understanding that this is a you know a board that fundraises. We we are a working board. Right. Um, we don't get the day-to-day uh, -day updates on the tips. Uh, you know, that's um, not yeah. how it works. We do, yeah. however, uh, on successful tips, they go to the board for approval of the payment. Okay. So we get to s see every board meeting that, hey, this program is working because we just approved, you know, $800 to someone or, or whatever. Wow. So it's... Uh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. then w when we make that... $800 reward or whatever, then we think in the back of my mind, oh, we've got to fundraise another 800 bucks. <laughs> and now we got to find, yes, find, some, find somewhere to come yeah, up with that yeah. for us. So That's so it's funny. Uh, and uh, we, we got a good board. It's a good group of people, but yeah. uh, we could always use more. And yeah. And also casual volunteers as well for other events. And right, just even helping with the 50 50 at the car shows and things yep, like definitely. that. And, you know, going to community events, you will often set up tables and right. tents and to just promote and all that. So yeah, we, we were just out in Meaford at a community safety event event to help, you know, promote community safety. And right. that's really, you know, the core of Crime Stoppers. So. Yeah, absolutely. And how would people go about getting involved? What would be their best course of action? They can go on our website, cstip.ca, okay. and uh, they send us an email, or they can call. And if they want to call, it's 519-371-6078. And, and I'm one of these people that just push a button on my phone, so I have to, <laughs> I have to read oh, phone I have numbers. No, I don't know <laughs> anyone's phone number. Yeah, it's exactly. OK. I don't even know my mother's exactly. phone number. I couldn't tell you. But, um, uh, what, one great number I do know mm -hmm. is that since inception, Crime Stoppers, drugs, and recovered stolen property in that, uh, this year we have totaled, well, well si since inception, but this year we just broke the $55 million mark. Wow. Wow. So that's just in, that's just in Gray and Bruce. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. fifty-five yeah. million in just fifty-five Gray and Bruce. million dollars. About Incredible. fifty million dollars in drugs and five million in recovered stolen property. Incredible! So Incredible. The, the program does work. Absolutely. Right. And remember to check out their show uh, October 14th at the Legion with Midlife Crisis, yep. a fundraising event. Uh, details are available on their website or is at uh, Crime Stoppers of Gray Bruce on Facebook. Right. All right. Perfect. Peter Reed from Crime Stoppers Gray Bruce, thank you so much for coming in today to thank talk to us. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate the exposure. Uh, stay with us here on Great County Life. Coming up, we are going to meet some furry friends who are looking for new forever homes. Renee Robbins will join us from the Owen Sound Animal Shelter. That's next on Gray County Life on Rogers TV. Thank you. In recovered property? In drugs and recovered property. Oh, oh. What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to rogerstv.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers. These days at your local Legion, we're marching to the beat of a different drum on a mission to support veterans, to have fun, and to welcome everyone to our ranks. You don't have to be a veteran to join the Legion. And as a member, you'll join thousands of others serving our veterans, our communities, and our country. Oh yeah, and our member perks program will save you thousands on shopping, dining, products, and services across the country. Join us at legion.ca. About the place where there's nothing but big trophy pike. You know, I think I found it. And you know the best thing about this? It's on a budget. I'm Bill Spicer. This is the new Fly Fisher. Hi, I'm David Sherman, host of Politically Speaking. Join me for my next show, where my guest will be Ross Kentner, Mayor of Meaford. Politically Speaking on Rogers TV.
Welcome back to Gray County Life. Joining us in studio, Renee from the Owensdown Animal Shelter. This is probably our favorite part of the day. We get to meet a very cute animal that is looking for a forever home. This is Sadie. Tell us about Sadie, Renee. Well, Sadie is a senior. Uh, we were told 11. I have my doubts only because she is so so spry. She's so bouncy and wiggly and her eyes are clear and her breath smells great, which is weird. Um, <laughs> but possibly an 11 year old, um, Yorkie Shih Tzu spade female. With that part I agree with. She is definitely a Yorkie Shih Tzu and she's definitely a spade female. And your name is Sadie, so that stuff we know for sure. <laughs> Um, we'll say 11 or senior for sure. And what that means is actually not bad things at all. It means that she's passed all of that crazy, busy, energetic dog stuff, although she's still got some energy. She's not going to perhaps chew the couch, she's dig a hole in the backyard, your house. she's not gonna run away. I mean, hopefully, yeah. um, all of those things. Um, Sadie has lived um, in an older home she enjoyed her weekends at the trailer, um, so she does travel back and forth and she could do a trailer life. Um, she is used to being somebody's best buddy, undivided, spoiled rotten all of the time, which is why Sadie is here. She's only been with us a couple of days, but as you can imagine, she's got a big, big life change ahead of her. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea is to get her moving out as fast as we can before she discovers that she's homeless. Right. Sorry, sweetie. I'm sorry. It's okay. She thinks she's it's just totally on a sleepover okay. right now. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, we're really, really hoping to see another older home with her. Um, older and that's somebody who's perhaps retired, who's going to be home. It would be very difficult for her to move into a family where you're all going to work and leaving her sitting for the entire day. It's something she could do but we really would like to see her in the best suited home where she's the happiest and if we can do that for her somebody who can take her to the trailer and take her for car rides into Tim Hortons and do all of those things is exactly what she needs yeah. right we're gonna try our best right yeah. it's up to them I mean I'm gonna do my best but she wants to be your companion she does um, now this little lady will require regular grooming and she will require um, regular vaccinations like any dog does but in saying that the rest of her stuff medically has been taken care of as she ages she's doing really really darn well and I don't think you should have any major concerns um, of course until things get you know on the other side of things let's not talk about that right <laughs> she is good with cats she is good with dogs she is good with children again not raised with any of those things she can do it just might take her some time to adjust to that sort of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, something that would be really ideal is if she had that perfect little same home she kind of had before, but maybe go visit mm -hmm. um, children and animals because, I mean, they do think they do need a little bit of that too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you're a good girl. You are she's, a good girl. She's very quiet. She hasn't she barked at all. <laughs> you can put her anywhere, honestly. Um, it's just really about finding finding the right match, right? So that you're happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to go down on the ground. Okay, okay, go. Okay, go. <laughs> As you can see, she's really able to do that, which is nice because, yeah. yeah, the older ones, not so much. Um, she did, however, remind me to remind everyone watching um, that the shelter often acquires animals because their owners have gone um, to a nursing home or their uh, health is failing or they've gotten themselves in trouble. These are the main ways we receive them. Um, in saying that, we like to remind people to make plans and arrangements for your pets. Hate to call you out on the spot. You both have pets. You got somebody for them if something bad happens? Mm. We do mm. have a backup plan. You do? Good, yes, we do. good. I'm assuming my parents would take them. Yes. <laughs> Double check. <laughs> Do me a favor and double check. I mean, I, again, I hate to, you know, talk about bad things, but I mean, right. the reality is we make arrangements for our kids mm -hmm. as we should, yeah. or I hope we do, or we should if you don't. But at the same time, consider your pets. Throw it in your will. I have mine in mine. I mean, I've also got a lot of pets. Um, but it's certainly something to consider. We often think, okay, well, we're going to get older and go to a nursing home, and then at that point, we're not going to have pets. But we don't realize that sometimes life throws us a curveball. Mm -hmm. um, in the beloved Sadie's case, I'm quite sure the owner was realizing things were, were happening. Unfortunately, no family members were available. And we can still be the resort. We want to be. We don't want you to toss them on the street by any means. We, we're here to help. But it is ideal if you think about those sort of things and make those arrangements. It could even be that somebody becomes 
quickly sick or has an accident and, and can no longer return to their home. We see a little bit of that too. Always have a plan. These little guys, it's not so desperate that you have a plan, but with the bigger dogs especially, because they're hard to put just about anywhere. There's that too. If you have a dog over 70 pounds and you don't have a plan B, do me a favor and get one, because those are the harder ones for us to fit in as well. And then we've got a heck of a mess when we've got no last resort and a place to put them, which is an awful place, right? Like, poor you. Yeah. Thanks again. You, shoot, you like me. I like you. We're good. Hey, we're good. Maybe one of these two. Maybe somebody out there. What do you think? Hmm. <laughs> Are you my mom? Are you my dad? <laughs> we're uh, we're talk good. Me, please. I'm sad and homeless and 11. Yeah. Um, I mean, we do talk about her being senior. The 11 is a little older. These little dogs live a long time, usually. Yeah. <laughs> the life expectancy of a Yorkie is about 16 to 18, a Shih Tzu 12 to 15. So a combination of, you've probably got another 5 to 6 years at least with right. this one. Um, <laughs> and judging by her energy level, I mean... Like I said, I'd be tempted to think she's younger because I would say you got at least another eight, which is a lot, yeah. a lot. So in saying that, if you are thinking you're a senior and this would be perfect, she'd be exactly what she's used to, she'd blend right in, please make a plan B. Yeah. <laughs> please, yeah. just in case. Renee, is there a, um, a fee reduction for senior pets that get adopted through the shelter? There is, there often is. Um, again, it depends on the circumstance and the, and the home, but yes, we want to absolutely do what we can to get her moving as fast as we can. I mean, her adoption, for example, is $100. Whoopee, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoopee. It doesn't and even I mean, the fact that vaccine. she's, you know, up to date on her back, and she's already spayed and all those things, she like, is. Hi, what are you oh looking at? Oh my gosh, she's so cute. <laughs> what are you looking yeah, at? She's a very curious dog. She's yeah. come from a loving home very clearly. You and, can tell. And uh, she's definitely a lap dog. I think we've established that through the <laughs> yeah. course of this interview. Absolutely. <laughs> she jumped off for one second and then wanted back up. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Something tells me this is exactly where you want to be, but not with me, but, you know, this idea. Right? <laughs> this is what you're comfortable with. You've probably seen the show, hey? Eh? Does <laughs> it look familiar? Yeah, she's like looking at yeah, herself in the yeah, monitor. She's like, hey, I remember this. Oh my gosh. Hey, well, if you're interested yourself. in meeting Sadie or finding out about any of the other animals that are currently waiting to be adopted, uh, you can call the animal shelter at 519-372-1123. And of course, you can always find them on Facebook as they do put up photos and information about the animals that uh, they have there at the shelter. Renee, thank you so much thank for coming you. in today. Say thanks. <laughs> if only she could. I'm sure she is. <laughs> she says thank you with her eyes. She is. <laughs> Where's my thank you face? Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's edition of Gray County Life. Thank you to our guests, Marcia Cunningham and Peter Reed from Crime Stoppers. And thank you to Renee as well. We will see you again next week here on Rogers TV. response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. I did it. I need it. Here, I gave it. And I am alive. As an organ donor, you can save up to eight lives and enhance the lives of 75 others. Please go to our website. Pledge a gift to life. You'll be glad you did. It's closing time, and you stayed out longer than you planned. So now you can't drive, and the buses have stopped running. You could always call your girlfriend. Or maybe your roommate?